Howdy duty buckaroonies. Welcome back to another episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron. Do you want a bunch of the same melodies that are in every other melody pack, but I change a couple of notes in them? How about a pack that is absolutely jam packed with all the Beatport top 100 melodies that I reversed and put into a different key? How about an entire pack filled with next level game changing buzzword hype stuff because I got an associate's degree in marketing and decided to start a music business because I've been producing for 15 whole minutes and you can have it all for only five five easy payments of $89.95. Well, then this is not the video for you. And this just looks absolutely ridiculous. And uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm done with that now. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about melody, how to write a good melody or how to take a melody you've written that's maybe 80 or 90% of the way there and just fix it and make it work for the track. And we're going to be doing all this using a couple of tools and techniques that you can go try out today, like right now. Today's video is also sponsored by my friends over at Hook Theory. Hook Theory is one of my favorite online resources for all things related to music theory. I don't even know how many times I've talked about it on the channel here over the years. It's just absolutely awesome and it's something you should know about. If you're absolutely new to music theory, Hook Theory's got an excellent book that gets you up to speed on all the basics and shows you a lot of interactive and practical exercises that you can immediately take and use in your sessions. Otherwise, if you're a bit more familiar, there's another book as well that goes into some more interesting and advanced concepts to help you write and utilize things in some new and interesting ways, again, with a lot of very practical interactive exercises. The free version of Hook Theory is actually incredibly deep and really powerful, but the paid version alongside the books is even better. It unlocks just a massive set of tools that are really useful for composition or suggesting things or helping you find different avenues to explore with your music. So big thank you to Hook Theory for sponsoring today's video and helping to support the channel. If you want to check out Hook Theory or the books for yourself, you can use my link down in the description. I really appreciate it as I get a small kickback as well. So it's a great way to start writing better music today and help support your boy right here in the process. Here we are in the DAW with a pretty basic starting point. I've got a pad, I've got a bass line, I've got some other stuff, and I've got my chord progression, which is just an F minor down to an F minor over E flat. Really nothing too horribly interesting or spicy. But what we're gonna do is plunk down a melody on top of this, just the first thing that comes to mind, and then we're gonna start playing with it using hook theory and talking about how to improve it. With that, I'm not purposefully going to write a totally horrible and out of key melody because I'm going to assume you at least know the basics of how to write a melody that is in key. If you don't know how to do that, you could pause this video, go check out some of the lessons from Hook Theory, and then join us back here once you've got the basics down. Melody will come in here. And maybe we'll bring in a new melody here. Cool, I think you get the idea. So let's roll back to about here and just record in a melody. Three, two, one, go. Sure. So nothing too terrible, but maybe just not all that interesting. And if we bring that around to this next part, how does it sound? Not too bad, but there's room for improvement. And let's talk about how to take a melody from this to a more finished melody that really works better with the song. So to get the ball rolling, let's open hook pad here. And I've started things off. I went in and changed the key to the key of my song. This is gonna be F minor. And I laid down my chords. I have an F minor and I have an F minor over E flat. So to do that, I just went in here to the bass sets, set the bass to E flat and then grabbed the F over E flat right there, 
Now we've got our chord progression. Let's just duplicate this out because it goes around twice. Paste that in. And we are now ready to go. So we could recreate our melody here, but that might be rather tedious. So what we can actually do is go to File and then Import a MIDI Melody. Back here in the DAW to export a melody in MIDI, I'm just gonna open a new project here. I'm gonna copy this MIDI, bring it into this new session, activate that, okie dokie, and we'll go to File, Export MIDI, and I'm just gonna export this to the folder and we'll bring it into Hook Theory. Okay, back here in Hook Pad, let's go to the beginning, File, Import MIDI Melody, and this was New Idea, F minor, something like that. I'm gonna ignore the meter and tempo information, and now we've imported our melody. Let's give it a play. Cool. So what can we do to improve this melody? The tool we're going to be using is the guides up here at the top. If we click this, we now get guides as to what note is available in that chord. And this is a really good way to reinforce your melodies and play with a couple of different ideas. With these guides on, we see that the notes that are in that chord are highlighted. These are going to be our strong notes. These are notes in the melody that tie into what is happening in underneath of it, whether that's the chord or the vocal harmony or whatever it might be. The other notes are the notes that are in key, but they're not in the chord happening underneath. So these are going to be our tensions or color notes or whatever you want to call them. And these can be helpful to build tension, build anticipation, maybe lead the voicing into a new chord and all sorts of other things. So if we take a look at this melody, most of it is a good mix of everything. We've got some that are very reinforced, some that are a bit more loose, and then we kind of go back into something a bit more reinforced. So let's take this idea and change all these notes purely to strong notes. Maybe we'll go up, that's good. Drop that down, and now let's take a listen to the new melody using purely the notes that are in with the chord underneath. Now that works, but it's maybe just not all that exciting. But this is a super easy way to fix a melody if you've got something that feels pretty good, but maybe there's one or two notes that bug you and you don't know why. This is a really great way to simply change those to be strong notes or tension notes, and that can really alleviate a lot of problems. But as you can probably hear, using only the strong notes is going to be a little bit trite and boring. So now we can start to experiment with this melody by changing where these tension and release points are. So I really liked the way that this sort of walked down. So now we've got... So maybe we could change this one to kind of go back up in sort of that step fashion. I kind of like that interval jump there is kind of cool. So we're going to go back to F here, and that would be an F. So maybe we could jump down here and go above the F and try that. So we're kind of flirting around that F and that way when we go back to the F, when it loops back around, it's gonna feel a bit stronger. So let's go back and give that a play. I think that feels pretty good. Didn't like that. That's a little too mushy and weird. How about this, maybe? Cool, I think that resolves nicely. Let's try that just so it's a little bit closer because we're gonna go back to this B flat here and that provides a lot of tension jumping up to that E flat. So we don't want to get, I don't know, too similar.
Cool, and we've built a better melody in only a couple of minutes, really. Now that we've fixed this melody, we could then go back into our DAW and recreate this. But if you have the paid version of Hook Theory, you can actually go up here, File, and Export the MIDI file. So I'm just going to export that. And we're good to go. Let's drag that into the DAW. Okay, dragged that in here. I'm going to grab this lead. And let's see how that sounds compared to our original melody. I'm just going to get rid of that so we have the exact same thing going on underneath. Let's hear our melody versus the corrected melody using some of the techniques inside of Hookpad. So a pretty subtle difference, but I feel like it does kind of work a lot better against these chords. So let's move that in to this new section where I've actually got some different chords going on underneath. So that's these guys here. And let's hear how that melody lines up with that, because those chords are actually playing off the existing chords going on underneath. So this should feel a lot better and feel a lot more glued together than the original version where once those new chords came in, it sort of started to drift and feel a bit off. I think we've got a pretty solid melody here now. Of course, doing this over and over can get pretty boring, so I wanted to show another one of my favorite tools in Hookpad and Hook Theory to start iterating on ideas and start getting something a bit more interesting. I'm gonna turn off the guides here, and what we're gonna do is click a chord, and now I'm gonna go to the tone sets. This is going to look at the notes that are playing in the melody and say, hey, based on these notes that are happening, these are some chords you could use that would work with it. So I think maybe starting here, let's start on something a little bit different. So now let's listen to the melody that we used with some chords that have now been set to function against the melody. So that works, that's maybe not exactly the right feel, but it's getting somewhere. Let's take this and just keep expanding on this idea. I think we're actually just gonna split this chord right here maybe. Let's take a look at perhaps going to something like that. And let's change this major five out for a flat major seven, that might be kind of spicy. So let's see how this sounds. Okay, major five again, little too spice. Can't give too much spice. So not loving that, how about... Looking for something with a similar flavor. So that's kind of cool. Maybe we'll flip in here and find a different bass set. That might sound a bit more interesting. Let's skip ahead here and turn off the loop. 
So that's kind of cool, but now the melody's out. Let's flip back to our guides. And maybe we can just change a couple quick things here. Let's try that. And I think we could just move down a little bit here to the B flat. Let's try that. All right, I think we've built a new melody. And then from here, we can maybe lead into something new. So this chord is getting a bit away from what we've already used. So let's go back to the next section here and go to magic, or maybe we'll just go to popular actually and find where we could go from here. So maybe we could flip into E flat, and then we'll go to magic, which is going to then suggest what should come next based on kind of the overall probability of how most songs go. So now we've built some new chords here. Let's give this a play and see how this kind of resolves back around. Major three feels a bit bland. Minor five. Maybe we'll just get a nice inversion on that. Maybe we'll do something here with this major seven. Cool. Now we've got that. I'm going to export this once again here. So I'm going to export MIDI. And now we could bring this into our session to start evolving our track into something new. Dragging this out, we've got our new lead line here. We've got some new chords here. I'm gonna move those chords up as well. And then we've got the bass. So let's move that to the bass part and see how this all starts to flow together. So maybe this kind of leads into an entirely new section and we would need to probably start working on this melody a bit more, but I think we get the overall idea here where we could just simply go back into Hookpad, plug in our melody and start reworking it to fit with these new chords that we're introducing underneath to then evolve and progress this track into something new. And it's really that simple. By utilizing this strong note versus tension note technique, it's a very easy way to figure out what might be wrong with your melody and why it might feel a bit off, as well as finding points where you can start to turn things around and evolve it into something new and take it into some more interesting directions. Of course, using hook theory and the hook pad as well, that opens up a lot of new avenues to start finding alternative chord progressions, finding chords that fit the melody, if you've maybe got a melody but no idea what chord progression to write underneath it, and any number of other tools that you can use inside of Hook Theory and Hook Pad to complete your songs, gather ideas, and then bring them into your sessions and turn it into a finished piece of music. So that's all I got for this one. Big thank you to Hook Theory once again for sponsoring today's video and helping to support the channel, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found this helpful, I hope you learned something, and of course, as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.